problem with book shopping. Hi friends, my name is Katya, this is Kat Reads A Lot, and I need to save money so I should not be buying new books, even though I love spending time in bookstores. It's one of my favorite things. I think they're so cozy and it's so fun to browse. And as much as I love my local library, it's a very different vibe and it also doesn't have the new books that I'm excited to see in person every time that I go. Today I was really in the mood to go book shopping, but instead of book shopping, I'm going to go book browsing and I'm going to make a list of all of the books that I'm interested in. And instead of buying them, I'm going to place library holds on them so that I can pick them up from my local library. And I'll have to be a little bit patient to wait to read the books, but this way I'm supporting my local library and saving money. And I'll show you guys at the end of the video how much money I ended up saving by borrowing these books or placing holds on them instead of just buying them. So without further ado, let's go to Barnes and Noble. Welcome. It's the next day and right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all of the books that I was interested in and that I filmed clips of yesterday when I was at the bookstore and I'm going to then take those books and place a whole at them at my local library and that way I can just, I don't know, like not give in to the immediate gratification of purchasing a book because I feel like that's why I enjoy book shopping so much. It's the immediate gratification of like having a new book in my hands, but I want to be better about purchasing books only when I've read them before and I know that I like them or I know that I'm going to reread them or I know that they're a favorite that I'm going to want to loan to other people, like that kind of thing because otherwise I end up with books that just sit and sit and sit on my shelf for years because at one point I was interested in them and then I just never got around to picking them up. My TBR shelf is not quite as large as a lot of other people's on booktube, on bookstagram, just like on the bookish internet generally, but that doesn't mean that I want the collection to continue to grow. I would much rather have the test drive experience of borrowing from my local library, especially because I think it's so important to support your local libraries and I really encourage you to do so if you have the option. So with that being said, I am going to look at the clips that I filmed. Um, of the books that I was interested in. And then I'll go into my, my library app and place some holds. Okay, the first one that I saw that I was interested in was Girl Abroad by Elle Kennedy. I've never read anything by Elle Kennedy before. I know that she's very popular for her sports romances. I think it's like a hockey romance maybe. That is her most popular one. Now, I have never read that book. I don't think that hockey romances are my thing. And again, I've only tried reading one. I tried reading Icebreaker and I think I would have disliked that book regardless of if it was about sports sports or not, like there were other things about the characters in the story that didn't gel with me, but that doesn't have anything to do with this book. This book is about a girl who goes abroad for a year in London and is finally out from under the thumb from her beloved but overbearing retired rock star father. It seems just like a fluffy, happy escapism kind of rom-com and sometimes I need that, sometimes I love that, and I also particularly enjoy the sort of fish out of water book of a person traveling to a new place. It makes me nostalgic for like Anne and the French Kiss, Love and Gelato, like that kind of thing. I could see this being in that same vein and so for that reason I'm very interested in it. It looks like the pink cover is actually a Barnes & Noble exclusive because the book on the library app is actually blue which is kind of cool. Next is Poor Dear by Claire Oshetsky. This is a book that was actually first put on my radar by Book Page which is a publication. It's a monthly magazine that I always pick up at my local library. They have copies that people can just take which is so nice and they feature books that are coming out in that month and Poor Dear was a book that I saw featured in the January book page and I, I don't have the January one anymore um, but I just picked up, I got the February one the other day and it looks like this and it's like my favorite thing. It's so much fun to flip through and to like see what's what's coming out soon. So this book seems like it's a little bit more of a dark, mysterious, creepy literary fiction. We follow our main character, Margaret. She is a young girl growing up with like a lot of guilt because of something that happened to her best friend. Her earliest memory is the death of this best friend. And so over the course of the book, I think we're supposed to learn like what her involvement in that friend's death was. And she also starts 
I don't know if she's seeing this creature and it's like real, but it's called Poor Deer. And it's a strange and formidable creature who winds her way uninvited into Margaret's made up tales because Margaret is like trying to forget difficult memories and replacing them with imagined stories full of faith and magic that end happily. So it seems like this poor deer character is like a hallucination, a figment of her imagination, something that's kind of helping her cope with the tragedy and the trauma that she is dealing with. So yeah, very dark, sad, scary, but it's a very slim novel. And for some reason, I'm just really drawn to this. This is not the kind of story that I typically go for, but something is telling me to read it. And I'm, I'm very intrigued. Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. I'm immediately drawn to an Emily Austin book because I loved Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead, which was her debut novel. I really like the way that Emily Austin writes about characters going through depression and anxiety, but also imbuing them with so much hope and just making like a really relatable main character in Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. That book really resonated with me. And so I'm very curious to read her sophomore novel. This book seems to follow a pretty neurotic main character, much like the character in Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. But this time her name is Enid. She is is a serial dater who is obsessed with true crime podcasts and afraid of bald people and she is fumbling her way through her first serious relationship and navigating a new family life with her estranged half sisters. She starts to worry that someone is following her and paranoia takes over her life. So I don't really know like what direction this book will take. I just know that I have liked this author before and so I have a good feeling about it and I guess I guess I'll see how it is. I also was interested in Flores and Miss Paola. This book follows our main character Flores who is 30 something. She lives in a Brooklyn apartment with her mother and they're very very different but it's been three years since her father died and the two of them are still grieving his death. But one day Flores discovers a note written in her mother's handwriting that says forgive me if I failed you remember that I always loved you and that unearths a lot of, of history and mystery and just curiosity in Flores about her parents and their relationship. So definitely something that I'm very interested in. I recently finished reading Banyan Moon and this seems like it's going to have a similar mother-daughter not necessarily a estranged relationship but like difficult rocky relationship that grows over the course of the book and I just really enjoy that so I'm very excited to have this one on hold as well. Begin Again by Emma Lord follows our main character Andy. She's a freshman in college and she seems like a very type A ambitious sort of character and everything in her life starts going wrong at least according to her standards. Since she's a freshman in college I believe she's the oldest Emma Lord Lord character I will have read from yet. I've really enjoyed Emma Lord in the past. I read You Have a Match and To Be Cute and really really enjoyed both of them. I think there was one more also about a girl who wanted to be a Broadway star, but I don't remember what that one was called. I don't really know a lot of details about this book, but it seems like the cotton candy sort of summary read that I always am really drawn to. I love a YA contemporary. When I saw Emmett by Elsie Rosen, I was so excited because I haven't ever read an Emma retelling and Emma is either my first or second favorite Jane Austen. I think it's tied with Pride and Prejudice, but I, I love Emma. This book follows our main character Emmett Woodhouse, who of course is handsome and clever and rich, but at the beginning of the book, his friend with benefits Harrison asks for his help finding a boyfriend. So I guess that's the, the Harriet character of the story and everything kind of goes from there. Like I said, since this is an Emma retelling, I feel like I know basically what will happen, but I'm hoping that something about it will surprise me. I just love that it's a gender bent gay teenage Emma. I think that that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, this one wasn't one that I was actually interested in buying, but I saw Sing Your Name Out Loud, 15 Rules for Living Your Dream by Jason Derulo. And the fact that it's called Sing Your Name Out Loud Loud, almost made me laugh out loud in the Barnes and Noble. I just, I love that. I love that for him. I love that for anybody who's buying that as a self-help book. And honestly, sometimes when I'm feeling anxious or down, I just need to remind myself to, to have the confidence to sing my name <laughs> out loud. A nonfiction book that I was interested in is Love Across Borders, Passports, Paper, and Romance in a Divided World. I don't read a lot of nonfiction, but I was just very interested in this. It says, Love Across Borders takes readers through contentious frontiers around the world to reveal the widespread prejudicial laws intent on dividing us. So the author starts by telling her own
own love story of how she and her partner met in Istanbul when they were both reporting on the Syrian civil war. But then she goes on to talk about other couples and, and issues that people face in terms of immigration difficulties. It says, in this look at the global immigration crisis, Miller interweaves love stories similar to her own with a study of the history of passports, the legacy of colonialism, and the discriminatory laws shaping how people move throughout the world every day. I just think this sounds really, really fascinating, especially as someone who is the daughter of somebody who immigrated to the United States and also as somebody who has like an interest in immigration law generally, I think this will be a really valuable read. In Ready or Not by Cara Bastone, our main character Eve ends up unexpectedly pregnant and also ends up falling in love with her best friend's brother. I was immediately drawn to this book because of the cover. Everything about the blues and pinks and greens and springtiminess of it are so me. I like immediately like locked in on it. I historically have not thought that a book about an unplanned pregnancy or a surprise pregnancy would be something that I was interested in, but last year one of my favorite romances of the year was Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young, and that book very much is all about an unplanned pregnancy and about the two characters finding love um, both in each other and in this new child they're bringing into the world, and it was so heartwarming, and I hope that I find that same kind of heartwarmingness with this book. Okay, I got a new camera battery, and we're back with the next book. Next book that I'm going to talk about is The Assassin's Apprentice, which I was already really excited to read. This book is on my like yearly TBR for 2024. It follows our main character who trains to be an assassin. That's really all I know about it. I think the main character has some sort of ability to communicate with animals, but I don't know the details of that yet. So I am going to place a hold and I see that my library has the illustrated edition, which is so exciting because the illustrated edition that I saw at Barnes and Noble and tried to flip through without spoiling myself was so beautiful and so it would be really nice to read the illustrated edition. The only thing about a high fantasy book is that sometimes I do like to own those because I read them so slowly. I feel like sometimes it takes me longer to process the world building in a high fantasy and so I just I need to take more time with it. So I'm hoping that since this is a little bit of an older title, I'll be able to renew my loan and hopefully keep it for a little longer than what the initial loan period is. Next is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I just finished Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher a few weeks ago and I loved it so much and I'm excited to talk about it in my February wrap up. But that was like a dark fairy tale twist on Sleeping Beauty and this book seems also like it is going to be a dark fairy tale twist. It says, this isn't a fairy tale where the princess marries a prince. It's one where she kills him. After years of Mara seeing her sisters suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, this shy convent raised third born daughter finally realizes that no one is coming to the rescue and she needs to save them. She's offered the tools to kill the prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. She's joined on her quest by a grave witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a chicken possessed by a demon. This book seems like it's going to be cozy and creepy and that just really appeals to me. I think especially because I liked the tone of Thorn Hedge so much, I'm just excited to be reading more T. Kingfisher. And I'm also discovering about myself that I really like this kind of like fairy tale folklore fantasy, so I'm very curious about this one as well. Okay, last but not least, we have So Late in the Day by Clary Keegan. This is a short story collection, actually. I don't read a lot of short story collections, but I really love Clary Keegan. I loved Foster and Small Things Like These. Those are the two books by her that I've read, and I think I gave them four and five stars respectively. This author is just so good at writing really simply but really immersively, just making me feel like I'm right in the action of the story. And I love that about her, about how, how close I end up feeling to her settings and to her characters. I think that I would really enjoy a short story collection from her. Right, so these are the books that I placed on hold today. Love Across Borders, So Late in the Day, Nettle and Bone, Flores and Miss Paula, Emmett, Begin Again, The Assassin's Apprentice, interesting facts about space, poor dear, girl abroad, and I think that's it. But I think this was a good mix of different books and I just really love and value supporting my local library. So I wanna at least try to get books from the library when I can instead of purchasing them. I'm also gonna look up the prices of all of the books and I'll add them up and I'll put up the total here of the amount of money that I saved by borrowing these books instead of buying them. Also, one other thing that I wanna mention, I don't know if they offer this at every library, but at my library, they allow you to suspend your holds, which is really nice when I'm first in line 
for like six or seven books and I know that I don't want them to come in all at once because I won't be able to finish them in time, you can just go and suspend it and then the book won't come in. It'll just like hold your place in line and then once you're ready to start moving in line again, then you can unsuspend the hold. So I've got a bunch of books that I am first in line for but my hold is suspended so it'll only come when I'm ready for it, which is something that I really appreciate. And it's just a really nice convenient feature for someone who is interested in a lot of books but doesn't necessarily have the time to be reading them right now. I hope this video inspires you to play some holds at your local library. Thank you so much for watching and for spending time with me. I really appreciate you. I hope you're having the most wonderful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.